chair. Actually, this hat doesn't look too bad. I was a little worried about it at first um, when I pulled it out of. Uh, I didn't pull it out of in inventory. You know what the great thing great. about these uh, studio lights is it shows just how high my blood pressure is after the diet of strict caffeine I've been on for the last three days. Mm. <laughs> my heart feels a little funny. We'll see how that goes. We'll see if the five hour energy really settles that down. You're amazing. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm Tim. He's here. No, um, I'm new. I'm, he's he's I'm, new I'm, here. I don't I'm know. New. We're figuring it out. Um, yeah, welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. I believe uh, it's episode 26. I think you said that earlier. So I think you're correct on that. Um, so we are going to plug right along um, and get into some questions because I think you said there's 16 comments on this video yeah when i made oh nice so 15 comments on this mm -hmm, video mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay all right very cool then we'll jump right into it um is there anything you want to belay the people on r relay to the people no i'm gonna i'm gonna stay away from my fun facts as it goes i don't know i think <laughs> we'll probably get some fun facts by fun facts okay. in 1903 Ford Motor Company, I may not leave Holly Performance, and Harley Davidson were all formed. Interesting, we got four wheel and two wheel and carbureted applications all starting in the same year. I think these guys were friends because it's just good times. I mean, but think about where that's brought the industry. Those three particular things. I mean, hardcore America as it goes, but you know, now we're coming into modern fuel injection and, and there's and a train trains. and there we go uh before we actually jump into the first question i did want to just touch on this you you posted a comment um on our tech tuesday um action vulture check them out um if you haven't already um about doing a public q a tuning software thing a bop um so just answering basic questions and stuff about the tuning software i think that's a great idea i think that there are plenty of people that feel similarly about that so how would you feel about, you know, maybe next week or so scheduling a live stream on, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and that's all it is. People just come in, ask questions um, about the tuning software. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the cool thing about the, the live stream is it, it attracts trolls, but it also attracts <laughs> really good questions, like solid mm -hmm. questions that people are normally, they don't want to, like, post completely out there in the right. wild because people will be like, oh, you're not a mechanic or whatever. We're all at different skill levels, man. Right. You know, there, yeah. was, there was a time I'd never put a spark plug in before, you know, and up until last week I'd never done that. Uh, there's a time that I've never tuned for boost, and, you know, just this morning is the first time I've ever done that. So we'll, we'll schedule that in the future. I'll probably – we can announce it in another um, Tech Tuesday of the actual day. But if that is something you'd like to see, please – let us know. Let's I already see eight likes on it. So Let's do it. Pe some people watching this like Hey, it, I would so. at least have eight adoring fans that want to ask me some questions. And this is fantastic. I really I really do want to do this. I want to figure out how to do the screen share of the software. And just when good. people ask a question, it's not like overboard, like some crazy stuff that's going to be a 30-minute lecture. I'm just like, here's no, this. You this. Could. Yeah, I, we could. <laughs> we could. I'm not. We, we don't need to do that. All right. So let's get into this. Why you clicked on this video, we'll go into question one by V. Granith. Granith, am I reading that correct? Hi. Enjoying your Tech Tuesday vids. I live in Sweden, and I got your kill shot. Uh, with the blackjack kit first in Sweden question mark install went sw smooth in my Chevy C10 did my maiden start last week and the stock 350 did barely turn one rev before it fired right up sounds super smooth and went to idle at 850 rpm straight away super happy with it keep up the awesome work well that's not really a question but that's a pretty awesome story no, the question is the first one in Sweden I think it is I think it is. Uh, we have one in Finland, and we got a couple in Europe and various places. Some um, German, Germany and stuff like that. I yeah. Think. You know my favorite place in Sweden is? We're right there where Sweden uh, meets a few other countries. At, uh, I think it's Lake Constance. I like, can't. I, I went know. mountain biking through there. It was crazy. That's for, awesome. That was my 36th birthday whenever I was still living in Germany. I think those are like the happiest places on earth or something like that. It was a really good time. Outside Disney World. The That's food a was a little bit bland, i got to admit. But the sailing was nice. And the mountain biking in the Alps was nice. <laughs> Milo Racing, 1776. 
which is exactly how many millimeters wide the Dodge Viper ACR rear wing is. Mm. I, I don't know why I keep bringing that up. Other video, check it out. Command Center 2. <laughs> uh, will I need to lock out the distributor if I'm running a nitrous application? I love the vids. I'm getting close to finishing my install from a kill shot on my 98 Ford Ranger 306 small block Ford swap. Um, <clears throat> Locking out the distributor for nitrous applications. If you're running time and control, yeah, you yeah. want to lock that distributor out. That way you can set the thing. So if it's going to, if you're setting the feed wire in for the nitrous retard, you want to make sure that that's active yeah. and set for how much time you want to pull out. You want to have the distributor mechanically locked out and correlated to the digital versus mechanical values as it goes. I made a video on that. Check out my YouTube. Yep. And uh, this, um, yeah, yeah, you you want to run full time and control on yes. that. Um, another, another little side note on that. If you are trying to set your timing and you're seeing your timing just jumping around a few, mm -hmm. few bits and pieces here and there, don't worry about that. Rev it up a little bit. As long as it's forced to 15, it's going to stay at 15, so you can get it up like 2,000 RPMs and then dial it in like super, super smooth. You'll mm -hmm. see it jump around a little bit. The reason it does that is because of the low speed of the reluctor in the distributor itself, it is actually using math in conjunction with the signal to interpolate the two signals in between to, you know, kind of like an algorithm would set it up. Um, that way it has more of a stable idle uh, or more of a stable timing value. Um, so if you see it jump around, it's literally just because it's calculating where its position should be and where it should fire at. So every once in a while, it just decides like, hey, I'm going to be off a couple degrees. It's not really doing nothing. It's just where it indicates that. And that's just low speed. It doesn't do it at high speed. That's just a thing. All right. Moving on to question three and technically question four as well, both by Dominic Terry. Oh, good old Dominic Dom Terry. Terry that's 12. That guy's all right. Yeah. Um, love that guy. We're just going to go one at a time. So I'll do the first one, then the second. Okay. Um, first one is, what is the preferred fuel pressure on the jackpot? I've seen 43 PSI. And I know it comes from the set, so it comes set to that from the factory, but I know 58 PSI is a popular number too. I have your 65 pound an hour injectors and I have your adjustable FPR. Um, so we can set whatever is best. Thanks. Um, usually on the jackpot engines, 58 PSI works best. Um, that's what I've seen. But I guess you can do whatever. Well, so the facts on that, 58 pounds is fine. Mm -hmm. I use 58 pounds on, weirdly enough, all of my projects. So if you got 65 pound an hour injectors, especially if they're ACEs injectors, mm -hmm. they're rated at 43 and a half PSI at 65 pounds. So at, even at 65, I thought that was just 30. 65 pounds an hour. Okay. At 43 and a half hmm. PSI. Okay. So if you change it to 58 and a half PSI, mm -hmm. that means you're going to flow a little bit more. So you have to math that up mm. and change your injector flow rate as well. Not I just see. the injector rated pressure. Okay. Or you can just tell it that it's 58, leave it alone, and it's such a small amount, it'll just do its own math in the background. So if you're if you're truly running it on the system and you don't want to set there and augment numbers, set it at 43, 43 and a half and just send it. Okay. That makes sense. See, I always I always figured that for some reason LS engines liked 58 psi better, but I guess that was just That's with a, stock um, everything. GM comes as a four bar system. Yeah. We use a three bar system, but yeah, we can use sense. a four bar system. Um, and he says again, um, I came up with another one on the jackpot. The brown wire that says 12 volts from brake switch is that needed when using trans control? A little bit. The brake switch thing, when it, basically when you apply the brake switch, it unloads your torque converter. So closes the circuit, gets rid of the fluid pressure, collapses the piston inside that little turbine stator spinny boy, and, uh, yeah, unlocks your converter. That's what it does. Fair enough. That's it. I mean, it does its own thing, too, by the internal parameters as well. But if you're coming to a rapid stop and you don't want to have your converter still on it, just it just mm. tells it, hey, there's 12 volts here, turn the converter off. Yeah. That's that's what it does. Good questions. Mark hyphen NW three Delta India. Will the kill shot ECU or the Hall Effect distributors? I made an amazing tech document about this. It's fantastic. I sent it to the office because nobody read the thing, so I made sure to send it again. Um, <laughs> he's laughing because it's true. <laughs> So anyways, Hall Effect Distributor is reading the rising edge of the reluctor wheel. 
Just, That's his favorite distributor, by the way. It is my favorite. It's super accurate. Reads the rising edge. It doesn't do the trailing edge. It doesn't do the cam sync stuff. So it sees that rising rate and says one pulse, one fire. Mm. You set the thing in. You line it up with number one. Drop it in 15 degrees before top dead center. No need to lock any mechanical bits out. You go in there. You correlate 15 degrees and 15 degrees. You're good to go. And But you got to wire the plug. There's three wires. There's a switch 12 volt. There's a ground wire. Ground wire can go to the back of the head. Switch 12 volt can go to the V main wire on the harness. I know we say don't hook it to nothing. That's the only place it's really acceptable to hook mm. to. And then there's a signal wire right in the middle. Um, that goes to the gray wire that's going to be our tack in or CDI tack in or coil negative tack in or whatever. Hook it up there. Go into the wizard and tell it that it's a CDI. CDI gives a square 12 volt wave. Hall effect gives a square 12 volt wave. It'll sit there, look at that, do its job. Sweet. Some people like to, um, <clears throat> they'll use like a hyperspark. It's mm. the same design as ours. You just don't use the plastic thing. Instead of dropping it in at 57 and a half degrees of end angle, whatever it's called, mm. um, just kind of line it up, look at the sensor. You'll see a, a, a skinny tooth or a big window, whatever. That'll line up kind of with number one and just drop it in. Just Treat it like it's a magnetic distributor at that point because, in a sense, it'll see the rising rate and make a pulse. It won't do anything else weird because the math, we don't look at the falling edge on a non-sequential setup. That was sick. It, but I knew you'd like that question because I'm, almost all of our kill shot installs, outside of the ones that we've done for, like, you know, for a video, we you do them with the Hall Effect. I do everything I can with the Hall Effect. I've got <laughs> Hall Effect Deuces Wild. Hall Effect Kill Shot, Hall Effect Royal Flush, Hall Effect Wild Card, Hall Effect Joker, Hall Effect mm -hmm. Full House, and what else was there? You can't. I mean, I guess in theory you could run something with a high roller. The only really... thing you can't really run is the high roller with yeah. the Hall Effect because it's looking for the variable reluctance sign style wave, the little wavy one, not the square one. Mm. I always tell people just to use the magnetic one because you just punch a couple buttons and call it a day. It's fine. It plugs into the harness. That's you don't have to say, wire anything extra. Say, easier. easier. I, I like the Hall effects because it's just extra, extra accurate. Ben McCready, question six, I believe. 2152. My fuel rails and injectors were full of trash. Junkyard, engine, and truck intake. I cleaned it out two years ago and was uh Full of oxidation, replacing everything, and we'll check back with the good news. Yeah, I got some methods on that. So I, I do with a lot of junkyard motors, right? Yeah. Because I love a good junkyard build. Mm -hmm. You know, big fan of the uh, the sloppy mechanics and all that stuff. Because, you know, I'm... Yeah, look, I even answered that one. Yeah, it's very excited to hear. So mm. the thing is... If you're pulling a junkyard motor, make sure to clean that fuel system out. Pull your injectors, put them on the bench, you know, put them in some, like an ultrasonic cleaner. Mm. Go to most any other mom and pop garage. A lot of them cats will have like um, an in injector flow bench. You can flow them back, flow them ultrasonic them and get them really clean for like generally fairly cheap. Um, it's just a, it's a pain when you get a junkyard motor and you got an injector hung wide open or you got one completely plugged up full of stuff. Mm. It it just gives you a headache. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Even if you get the the small plastic syringe, you can cut the end of it off because it's like a pretty close to a half inch or what have you, not whole. You can cram the injector in there with some fuel inside of it, and then use a nine volt battery and a momentary switch and actually pulse it if you want to do your at home version of it. Put a little mm. pressure with your thumb, sit there and just click the thing through, flip it over, do it backwards, flip it, do it through. You're fine. Fair enough. It's like an at home cleaning thing for like six bucks. Um. Last question. Actually, we got through all of these. I, I, my volume's low because I don't get too close to the microphone. It kind of yeah, smells like it's, it's been me. in a karaoke bar. So, <laughs> All right. Here we go. You read the question. I read the last one. <sighs> Let's see. I think this is off of a question that you answered last week. The, there is no telling. I believe this one is. here? I believe, I believe you answered a similar question to the injector's Um something about backfire. Jimmy Chavez 6135. Would bad injectors cause the engine to backfire and would I get into the, when you get into when the to gas? get into the gas? Um, system. It, yeah, it very well could. You could have a lean pop out the intake or it could be backfiring out the exhaust so it's just hosing 
it mm. down through there. Um, some Sebastian Hermes yeah. two eight two nine said, "Check crank sensor, valid statement. Check your cam sensor too." Mm-hmm. Um, you also did said things about checking timing and oh, other things. Well, related. on a jackpot that, that's kind of set with a chain, and there's oh, some sensors, right, so right, it's right, a whole right, thing. Right. But I don't know what I was thinking there. If it's a fresh build, you could be a tooth or so off. It'll run, but gee golly, it sure will give you a headache. Because it'll pop and bang and carry on, but idle. Maybe fine, that is it, or it won't idle fine. You got to get into it, and it runs crazy good if you you know advance it just the right way. Um, but yeah, it's easy to get it a tooth or so off if you're trying to lo- line everything up. Twenty six episodes. Words of wisdom, nugget of knowledge, Tim. Mm. If it seems questionable, give us a call. Yeah, I like that one. If you don't know where to put something, and you yes. not oh my you're not seeing it in the manual, and it Please. don't make sense. Call us or, or or email or send a just a quick email, either a customer service at acezfi dot com or tech support at acezfi dot com. Mm-hmm. Somebody will respond to you if you're unsure. Please. The, the best the best <laughs> Please. thing is if you're unsure about one little hookup and you want to take a few extra minutes and give us a ring, that's fine. We support that kind of action yep. because if you get it hooked up wrong. Then there could be all kinds of stuff, yes. like waiting on shipping of a new ECU, yep. or you've got a handheld and then you've broke the handheld, yeah. or done something funny, and now it's like, hey, that particular one this week happens to be on back order, yep. so it's going to be three weeks until you get your handheld back, and then you're just sitting there with your project to barn. Yeah. So, if you got a question, holler. <laughs> Well, hey, everyone, thank you again so much for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have any comments or questions about EFI or ACES EFI, um, feel free to leave a comment down below as well. And if you see ACES Tech Tuesday media anywhere else on social media, feel free to share it some love. And Tim, like always, we will see you guys in the next Tech Tuesday video. Bye now. Bye now.